Hello, everyone, and welcome to my talk. Today, I'd like to talk about rust based secure, and lightweight container runtime for embedded systems. My name is Manab Sigimoto. I'm a system software engineer at Sony R&D Center. My research interests are container virtualization, unikernels, and Linux kernel. Here is the outline of my presentation. First, I'd like to start by talking about Linux container virtualization and the container runtime software. Second, I want to share how we have managed these containers on embedded systems and the problems of existing container runtimes. Then, let me introduce our rust based secure and lightweight container runtime optimized for embedded systems. After that, I will show the evaluation of our rust based runtime. Finally, I will talk about the future work of our runtime and the conclusion of this presentation. So, let's start with the first introduction. Linux container provides isolation and containment for applications, and the mechanism can prevent attacks from interested applications. Recently, the container has been utilized increasingly in embedded systems because the techniques is more attractive to resource constrained systems due to the lightweight. These containers are created by the software is called, called container runtime. What is container runtime? Container runtime is a software that spawns and runs containers and is responsible for the mechanics of running the containers. The container runtime, such as RunC, sometimes are referred to as low level runtimes. The container runtimes are compatible with OCR runtime specification to be able to receive requests from higher layers, such as container D. OCI stands for Open Container Initiative. As you already know, Containers are implemented using Linux namespaces, C groups, capabilities, and so on. So the low level container runtime are responsible for setting up these Linux features for containers. This slide shows the software stack of the container runtime. Red supports users create containers by Kubernetes. First, Kubernetes of Kubernetes communicates with high level container runtime such as ContainerD and Cryo through CLI. CRI stands for Container Runtime Interface. Second, high-level runtime per images from registries, manages them, and hands over to a low-level runtime through OCI. Lastly, low-level runtime such as RunC create and launch the containers using the Linux features. So today's topic is here, low-level container runtime. Now I'd like to talk about the motivation of our study. First, I will talk about the requirements of embedded systems. The main difference between general purpose systems and embedded systems is that embedded systems have more restrictions than server systems. In resource constrained systems, the memory size is small, storage capacity is low, and the CPU is not high. In the case of mission critical systems, real time applications run with critical functionality on the systems, and the systems are longer life cycle than servers. So we needed to manage containers while meeting these requirements. How we run container runtime on such embedded systems? It is difficult to use Kubernetes or Docker on embedded systems because those software includes performance overhead and a high resource usage to manage containers. For example, Kubernetes and Docker include a high level runtime that manages container images. In the case of the mission critical systems, we cannot ignore the overhead because response time on the system should be high for real-time applications. In addition, the right operations shown in the lifespan of EMMC, that stands for embedded multimedia code, that is a standard specification of embedded memory. Please look at the figure on the left. A demo service such as Darkly always writes up writes to metadata files in mounts on EMMC of embedded systems. We want to avoid the right operations set as much as possible to extend the lifespan of the EMMC. To solve these problems, we run the rollable container runtime alone on the systems. In the figure on the right, container runtime runs without any services. In this way, we can manage containers effectively on the systems. However, the existing container runtime should have some problems in terms of security and the right way when we run the runtimes on embedded systems because runtimes are not optimized for the systems. First, in terms of security, Linux capabilities are not fine-land access control. 
when a user wants to use a ping command, the user needs to have a CapNet raw capability. However, CapNet raw also allows the user to run up spoofing attacks. Second, the rootless container by username spaces is very strict for the systems. The username space allows the containers that are unprivileged um, um, outside the namespace to have root privileges, while at the same time limiting the scope of that privilege to the namespace. However, the rootless container cannot emulate all system calls because the containers in the user namespace cannot manipulate the global resources in the systems. In the case of the embedded systems, it is not good because some embedded, system, embedded applications are needed to access devices via such mount system call. Second, in terms of the right weight, container setup time is not fast enough for real-time system. Most container runtime, such as RunC, are written in Go language. Go language is very good, but unfortunately, the application binary size is big for the embedded systems and the garbage collection by Go runtime increases high CPU utilization. So we have to solve the problems in embedded systems. Okay, now I'll talk proposal to solve these problems. Here, I propose SL runtime that is Rust-based, secure, and lightweight container runtime for embedded systems. SL runtime is implemented fully in Rust with modern clients and OCI compatible minimal container runtime for embedded systems. SL runtime is roughly divided into a secure mechanism and a right-weight mechanism. In the secure features, uh, isolation by container for high dependability. The SL runtime has a fine land access control and the memory safety by Rust for security. In the lightweight mechanism, raw memory usage and the smaller binary size from the benefits of Rust. And the first setup that is our original features and the real time support for embedded systems. I will explain these mechanisms in detail later slide. Here, uh, you can see the comparison table of SL runtime and existing container runtimes. SL runtime is more lightweight and secure than their existing container runtime. The binary size of SL runtime is 2.63 megabyte, so that is much smaller than Lancy. Container runtime radical developed by Oracle is also implemented in Rust like SL runtime. However, the development was stopped in 2018 and the repository has already been archived. The Rust features and the credits used in Radical have been updated because Rust is the first growing language. Compared to Radical, SL runtime is the latest Rust based container runtime. Why did we choose Rust over Golang or CC++ to develop the container runtime? The answer is that Rust is a great fit for embedded systems. First, the performance is equivalent to C, C++. Second, Rust guarantees memory safety without garbage collection. Third, the Rust community has awesome clients for developing the container on time. I'll introduce these clients in the next slide. Lastly, Rust FFI that stands for Proling Function Interface is very helpful to bind Linux API. Gorang adapted by many existing container runtimes is also good, but has some limitations in embedded systems. The Go has a problem interacting with namespaces by Go runtime. In addition, the application binary size is big compared to Rust, and the Go based runtime includes performance overhead by garbage collection. Here, I'd like to share the clients for developing the container runtime. Rust has already a useful class for creating containers such as capability, rmit, cgroup, secomp, and things like that. PathFD class is used for the fine grained access control of SL runtime, and the core affinity is used for the SL runtime real time support. As you already know, we can develop the software easily using CRAF, so the JSON which maps or CI of JSON format into Rust data structures. This slide shows the SL runtime's architecture overview. In the next few slides, I will show the right weight mechanism and the secure mechanism. First, right weight mechanism. I will explain the first setup feature. The first setup launches a container speedily by leveraging a pre created container. By using the first setup, SL runtime can omit time for initializing the runtime and creating the container. Fast startup replaces only the execution process inside the container at a startup. So the runtime can reuse other configuration except for the execution process. 
This feature is useful because some containers use actually same configurations such as namespaces, capabilities, and things like that, except for the execution process inside the container. Please look at the figure on the left side. Now, some containers are created. These containers do not run yet. After that, when you need to run a real-time application, SR runtime replaces the dummy process with real-time application you want to run. Please look at the figure on the right. The normal run has initializing runtime, creating a container and starting the container phase. In the case of the first setup, you can reduce the time of initializing runtime and creating the container. So it is possible to run the container faster than normal run. In addition, SR runtime has real time support features that enables runtime to set a CPU affinity at a first setup. By using the future, users can set a CPU affinity depending on the CPU load at a setup. Here, I'd like to talk about the control flow of the first setup and real time support. Red supports a user creates a container by SR runtime. First, the user prepares the container configuration file config.json in advance. The configuration describes the dummy process as an execution process inside the container. After that, the user issues create operation and SR runtime initializes the container based on the configuration. At the end of this phase, the container creation is complete and all settings about the container initialization are complete. At this point, the container goes into a create status and the SR runtime monitors a file descriptor. Then, when the user wants to run the container using a fast setup, the user creates the fast setup.json, describes the real time process to be executed inside the container, and the CPU core that executes the process. Then, the user runs the first startup and the SR runtime writes the contents of the first startup configuration. At the moment, since the container that is waiting can read a file descriptor, the SR runtime causes the container to resume execution. So SR runtime sets the process and the container runs the exec exec execution process. Now, let me move on the secure mechanism of SR runtime. I already explained the fine grained access control. This is here. SR runtime is a fine grained access control enables the rootless containers to execute the system code safely. By using this fine grained access control feature, the rootless container can emulate even system calls that changes global resources because the fine grained access control server emulates the system call in the user space on behalf of the container based on the security policy that is set in advance by the ad administrator. Please look at the figure. Now we have the rootless container A and B, and the fine grained access control server with the security policy that allows container A to the mount tempfs and prohibits container B from doing mount tempfs. If container A does mount tempfs, the server catches a mount system call before executing it, checks whether the destination of the mount is tempfs, and the performance uh, performs the mount on behalf of the container A. Thanks to this mechanism, the rootless containers can issue the mount system code safely. If container B does not does mount tempfs, the server denies the mount because of the security policy. This fine grained access control mechanism is achieved using the new SecCom 95 feature. Here, I will explain the SecCom 95 feature that is introduced in Linux 5.0. The SecCom 95 provides a way to handle a particular system call in user space. Now, in this example, we have a container and a SecCom agent which handles the system calls on behalf of the container. First, the container will issue a system call. Second, SecCom catches a system call and executes the BPF program and the BPF returns notify. After that, SecCom asks the SecCom agent to want to run the system call and the agent makes a decision on whether the container performs the system call. To make the decision, the SecComp agent reads the system call arguments and validates the system call. If OK, the agent performs the system call on behalf of the, behalf of the process and otherwise rejects the system call. When the agent can successfully, successfully execute the mount system call, the agent sets the return value and return it to the container. Here, this slide shows how the SR runtime implements fine-grained access control using the SecComp notify. First, 
A system administrator launches a final and access control server as a root before starting a container. Second, user runs a container using config.json that describes the set component notify. A few months ago, OCR on time specification added the set component notify support to use it in containers. In the configuration file, Prisoner Perth specifies the path of a Unix domain socket, which is used by set component notify action. A user will create a rootless container using with the configuration. After SRL on time receives a create request, the runtime initializes a container and creates a set component notify file descriptor. Then the runtime passes the descriptor to the server. I will show the demo of a fine land access control. Our config.json describes that execution process is a shell and the username space setting and their set comp notify configuration. In this demo, I limit mount sysmical. Please look at the top right. First, I run the find land access control server that allows the container to the mount only when the destination is full directly. Second, I run the rootless container by a certain time. The user ID is not root, uh, is root inside the container, but on the host machine, the user is non root. Now, if it's not mounted, when I try to mount bar, the mount failed to because destination bar is not allowed to server. You can see the error message in the server. However, if I mount full directly, the mount was successful. Or we can confirm that full directly is mounted correctly inside the rootless container. Now, let me move on the evaluation of SR run time. The evaluation goals are measuring two types of start time, normal run and fast setup, and the memory consumption of the container run times. The existing run times that we use in this evaluation run SSG, Singularity, Run C, Sudan, and Radical. In the experimental setup, all the run times uses the same config as JSON. We remove the CGRIPS configuration because SR run time does not support it yet. Then we run the container runtime alone without any client tools. The container execute true, execute true command inside the containers. The result of a start time shows that SR runtime is the fastest among the existing container runtimes because the runtime is minimal. Please look at the graph on the left side. The normal run of SR runtime achieves 7.4 times speed up compared to run C. The radical is also rest-based container runtime, but SR runtime is much faster than radical. Please look at the graph on the right side. First startup time is 5.1 milliseconds, and first startup start up achieves 1.5 times speed up compared to the normal run. Here, this slide shows the memory usage of the container runtimes. The result of the memory usage shows that SR runtime is 3.84 megabyte, and it is small compared to go based or container runtimes. The important point here is that S run time's memory usage is equivalent to C run written in C language. C is the most preferred language for embedded systems, but Rust is also a great fit for the systems. Let me move on the Rust section summary. Here, I will talk about future work. First of all, we need to make S run time fully compliant with OCR run time specification. Currently, SR runtime does not support some features such as C groups, OCI hooks, and things like that because the runtime is a research prototype. Second, we need to enable Kubernetes to use SR runtime. Lastly, we plan to integrate SR runtime into Kata containers because Kata community has already developed their container runtime in Rust. Conclusion. First, Rust language is a great fit for embedded system due to the small memory footprint and binary size. In addition, Rust guarantees memory safety without any overhead. So we developed Rust-based container runtime for embedded systems. Our runtime has the first startup mechanism, the fine-grained access control for embedded systems. The evaluation shows that the runtime launches a container 7.4 times faster than Run C, and the runtime memory uses is equivalent to C basic runtime. This is all for my presentation. Thank you for listening.